welcome to Celebration Church. Yeah. Please excuse our screens. We're not able to get it right now. Hopefully it will be here next Sunday. Praise the Lord, hopefully. Um, so let's stand and just worship the Lord together.
shake hands. Welcome you to our new location. We are so excited to be here. So happy. It's been a long process, but the Lord has been faithful. Amen? Amen. So as you have noticed, and as Peyton has said, we don't have our screens and everything run for words, so we tried our best to get songs that you might know. And if you don't know the uh, verses, you can uh, sing on the courses, because I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter if we have everything in place that we want, because our focus is really Jesus Christ. And if our focus is on Him... All this other stuff doesn't matter because there are people in third world countries who are packed in like sardines in a tiny room that have none of the stuff that we have, and God's moving there. So let's just take our hearts. Let's just let's just take a moment. Let's pray together before we move on to our next song, and let's just ask the Lord to fix our gaze on Him. So God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for allowing us to gather together, and we want to put our our focus on you. So God, if there's any distractions in our lives, let's lay them down so we can glorify the name of Jesus because it's in the name of Jesus that lost are found. God, they are saved. And it's the only name that can move mountains. And as we call upon your name, Lord Jesus, we know that you give us peace. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, because your name is alive. Shadows can deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name, let's sing till we believe it. Is this the truth? Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light. Your name is a light. That the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Cannot be overcome. 
Your name is alive. Your name is forever lifted high. Sing it out. Sing his name. Jesus. But here's the thing. You're worshiping a false god. Right? You got to have God the Father, God the Spirit, and God the Son. So in your worship notes this morning, or excuse me, your sermon notes, I want to go through those things. Love, serve, and reach. And I used to do this early on. Uh, quite frequently, and I haven't done it in about six months, but I want to revisit this. Then I want to cast a little vision, and then I want to give you some ways that you can make an impact in the city. Do you know that God has called every single one of you to make an impact where you're at? You may not believe that today, and that's why I said in my prayer, a lot of Christians are saved right from something. They'll come up and make a decision, or they'll go to an event, or they'll make, they, they buy into this lie that Christianity is a one-time decision thing. And yes, putting your faith in Christ is that. I place my faith in Christ and that I surrender to him. But here's the thing. Christianity is a lifelong journey of us making an impact for the glory of God. Okay? So I want you to see that today as we're walking through this in our sermon notes. So number one is I'm going to go through love unconditionally. If you look there on your notes. And guys, can we get the dream teamers to close those doors for us? Can we close those? Because it's blinding me right here and I am kind of feel like I'm... You know, doing this here real quickly. But I want to look at love unconditionally in your sermon notes. Thank you guys so much. Right? I want to look at love unconditionally. How many people, I want you to raise your hand on this one, have ever been loved by the world? Raise your hand if you've ever been loved by the world. I know there's more than two people. You've been loved by the world. Right? How many people know that the world's love doesn't win? Despite the hashtag says love wins. I don't believe love wins. I believe God's love wins. Okay? Because if you've ever been loved by the world, you realize that the world says this, I will love you if you do something for me. Here's what God's love says, that in spite of you and despite of you, I'm still going to make the first move because my nature is love. I'm perfect love. And even though you're dead in your sins and you're depraved and you're wicked, I still am going to show you the greatest act of love that you could ever be shown. How many people don't want you to raise your hand on this one, but how many people have ever been told, I love you, and then you responded, then why don't you show me? Well, friend, we serve a deity today, and I'm meaning those that are Christians. Maybe you're not a Christian today. But those that are believers today serve a God who just didn't say, I love you, but demonstrated his love by sending his son Jesus to die. So here's the thing. When we say that we love unconditionally in our mission statement, here's what we're saying is according to the scripture right here in 1 John 4, 19, that we love because he has first loved us. Right? Now, because we're in our new building, I'm getting better at not being so PG-13, right? That's one thing I wanted to work on in the new, the new place. But some of us Christians are beholds. See, baby, I'm getting better. I'm like, yeah, can you slow down? Matter of fact, I had a guy here yesterday, Comcast Cable. I don't recommend getting here at 745 in the morning for cable, by the way, but that was, it is what it is and a story for another day. But we got here for cable to be installed because we didn't have Wi-Fi and we needed it for our live stream. And I saw this guy, he had two tattoos. He had two nautic stars, nautical stars on there, or the North Stars on his hand, and they were for balance. And so I get in people's Kool-Aid a little bit, you know, and I'm just kind of like, you know, man, tell me about those tattoos. I'm too, I'm too sissified to get one. And listen, we can debate it theologically and doctrinally later. Please don't, you know, get all upset and all that kind of stuff. But so I started talking to him, and, and anyhow, and uh, we were talking about church and all of this kind of stuff. And he said, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. I said, well, are you atheist or are you agnostic? He said, well, I'm agnostic. And I said, well, was there something done or, you know, why is the reason you believe in that? And he said, well, one of the main reasons, I'll be honest with you, is because of Christians. And he said, some of my customers, they're Christians, but they're some of the meanest people I've ever met. And he talked about how he used to work in the restaurants on Sundays and that they would come and repent of their sins, is what he said. Well, you know, we were out there, he was on a little smoke break, and we were out there talking in the parking lot. And he said they would come after church you know, full of the spirit and repenting of their sins, and then they would come in and take all this anger and frustration out on their server, and then they were the cheapest and stingiest tippers.
but yet we're trying to preach a, to this world about a love that they've never seen before. You see what I'm saying? You will never have the power to love people the way you need to love them unless the Holy Spirit has infiltrated your life. Because he will give you the power to love the unlovable, to go after the messy. That's always been our prayer. God, send us everybody that every other church. We're not interested in being the cool church. None of this stuff matters to me if the Holy Spirit is not here. None of this matters to me. We can take it all out of here if God is not going to be here. I mean it. If we're not going to raise up a people that want to make an impact for the city, then let's sell all this stuff and go join a church that is. Because the only thing that's going to change this city is a love that is divine, that is pure, and that is perfect. And you and I don't possess it apart from the supernatural work of Christ in our hearts, in our lives. Amen? You do not have the power to do it on your own. And it broke my heart for him to, to say that. And I wanted to weep because I said, man, we're trying to talk about this man named Jesus who loves sinners, who ain't with sinners, but yet us, we come in here in our churches and our four walls, and then we go out there and we can't even be nice to someone. Come on. We're never going to change a city like that. Never. So not only do we say we love unconditionally, but we say serve sacrificially. How many people know it's easy to serve when it's convenient? Amen. Do you know that there's people that have been painting these walls, doing these stages, hanging lights and insulation falling everywhere in the nasty bathrooms and wires and cables? They have spent their whole Christmas break up here working and polishing floors and all kinds of other stuff. Not because they wanted a pat on the back, because they knew that lives would be impacted by this ministry. They were sold on the idea of serving sacrificially. Okay? It's easy to serve when it's convenient, but true service comes when it costs us something. How do I know that? Because Jesus is the prime example of it. Look what he says here in your notes there in Mark 10, 45. The, tra the, the Passion Translation says, For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served by everyone, but to serve everyone and to give his life as a ransom price in exchange for the salvation of many. Listen, I, I don't have time to, to expound on this fully today, but I preached on this before. But listen, you will never be able to serve anyone until you allow Jesus to serve you first. I'll say amen to myself. Because here's how we perceive that. Here, I can feel it in the room. Here's how we perceive it. Oh, are you saying Jesus is a genie in the bottle like Christina Aguilera sang about it several years ago? No, that's not what I said. What I said is you do not have enough power and strength to serve anyone apart from being connected to the vine who will serve you with an infinite supply of power to serve. Because what will happen is you will only love to a certain limit and you will only serve to a certain limit, but you will go above and beyond when the Holy Spirit is in your heart, in your, in your life, right, giving you the power that you need. How does Jesus serve you? Well, he said this, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the creator of all the cosmos, God the Son says, I, I don't need you to serve me because the book of Acts says that we have nothing that we could offer God. There's nothing that we could do where God just goes. He doesn't need anything. But he says, no, 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 you've got this whole thing backwards. See, every other faith and religion says, come serve, come do this, come do this, come do this. Jesus said, no, 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 I served you first so that you can serve others. How did he do that? The main way he did it, he says it right here, is to become the perfect sacrifice and to meet God's righteous standard that we could never meet. And when we put our faith in him, he justifies us, he reconciles us before the Father, right? It's not just when it's convenient, but when it costs us something. Number three, real quickly, is reach whosoever. Man, if there's one, one thing that you want to get me really, I mean, to get me, and I hope it's a righteous anger that I get so mad about. And I know we got to be careful because we're online and people think we say things and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But here's the thing. Any church that doesn't look like heaven, I question if they really know God at all. 
I don't believe in the lie that you worship with your kind. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because people are made in the image of God for the purpose of God, for the glory of God. Right? Our churches should look like heaven. And the last time I checked, according to God's scripture, there is every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every people group, people from this side of the tracks, people from that side of the tracks, black, white, Hispanic, whatever the heck you are. Right? Maybe you're a melting pot of things. Hey, you're welcome. You should be in the body of Christ. I like to say it this way, that if you and I never shed one drop of blood on the cross, which we didn't, then we don't have the right to define who whosoever is. The scripture does that for us. Okay. Now, theologically, we have different people in here because some may be more on the reform side of things, and that's okay. And then we have some that are, that are bit, I just wanted to use a big fancy word in the new building today, are an Arminiist. Uh, there, I said my super spiritual word for today, right? But whatever side of the fence you're on is not the issue. The issue is you should live a life that loves and serves people regardless where they're at, regardless of their skin color, regardless of where they live, regardless of how much money they have in their bank account, regardless of anything, you should love and serve because Jesus first loved and served you. If you're a believer, I'm going to say it again. I have to question your Christianity. I know I'm not supposed to do that, and you can get on to me and send me emails and all that kind of other stuff. But maybe we need to come to the altar and take some self-examination, right? That we are to reach whosoever. Here's the other thing. We reach whosoever because the cross welcomes all, right? We reach whosoever because, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, friends? You are whosoever. I am whosoever. Right? It, it makes me think, many of, some of you don't know this, some of you do who are sitting in the audience today, but we actually used to be at a church here, it's probably been 10 years ago now, and my wife and I were called here to join an awesome group of people, and one of the things they used to say all the time was about, you know, reaching, uh, doing life together, reaching whosoever, and I'm going to tell you, man, it was such a beautiful thing to see all these people from all walks of life and it, it kind of brings me a, a little deja vu here because we're back in the same building 10 years ago preaching whosoever. Right? God never gets tired of reaching whosoever. And neither should his church. Look what it says, John three sixteen. Boy, I don't know if anybody knows this passage. If you don't, just uh, try to follow along, all right? For God so loved the world, he what? Gave. He loved, he served, right? His one and only son that whoever believes in him, well, who defines the who? Who's the one that gets to select the whoever? Not us, not Celebration Church. It's not because we paid the light bill here. God is the one who draws the whosoever. And I've been asked this question, well, who do you believe whosoever is? Well, that's a question for the day, but I'll put it to you this way. Whosoever is the one that the Holy Spirit illuminates to that heart. I can't control that. It's just my job to preach the gospel. It's his job to save the people. Amen? You, you with me so far? Okay, so God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here's, here's why I wanted to rehash this quickly is because I want Celebration Church. I want us to be both a church and individuals who major, who get a Ph.D. in 2019 in loving and serving and reaching. Some of us need to go from the associates level to the bachelors in 2019. And then some of us need to go to the bachelors to the Ph.D. in 2019 in loving and serving and reaching. Some of you need to get the GED in loving and serving and reaching. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Let's be that church in 2019 that loves and serves and reaches people, not for our glory. I can care less. I mean, I want people to come to the doors, and I want to reach our city. But here's the thing. Team Jesus is all around us. I just want them to go somewhere that knows Jesus. Do you understand that? I want them to go somewhere where they know Jesus and they have this vibrant relationship with Jesus. So let me, let me give you two mindsets that I pray that we adopt in 2019. Number one is that lost project right there in your notes. You can fill it in. There's a pen in the back of every seat. There should be. If you don't see it there in front of you, it may have fallen down in the pocket. That lost people aren't projects. They're people. Right? Lost people aren't projects. They're people. 
It angers me, and once again, you can pray for me if it's not a righteous anger, but it angers me when we treat people like they're projects. And we do the one token family or the one, right? That's not Bible. They're people that were made in the image of God for the purposes of God, for the glory of God. Right? I don't want anyone to ever walk in our doors and go, I didn't feel loved or welcomed here. And if you're new here today, I pray that our people talk to you. I pray that our people loved you. I hope that you know it's, it's our deepest uh, a goal to love you and to serve you and, and, and to help in any way possible, not for the sake of building Rob Sevilla's kingdom or Celebration Church's kingdom, right? We don't do gimmicks here. Gimmicks will never save you. What we do here from beginning to the end and everything in the middle is Jesus. Okay? And if Jesus wants to do gimmicks, then we'll buy into it. But last time I checked, he doesn't like it. Okay? But I want us to treat people like they're people, not because they can benefit us, but because we were first loved and we were unlovable. Here's another lie. That God only helps people that help themselves. That friends, that's nowhere in the Bible. Because in Ephesians 2, it says that we were all dead in our sins and trespasses. And there's some people here today that are still are. But praise God in his mercy and in his love, he can awaken your heart just like that. To the glorious grace that is found in Christ. You see? God helps people that don't help themselves because all of us could not rescue ourselves. All of us couldn't fix ourselves. And I love Tony Robbins and Ziggy Ziglar, the stinking thinking, and I love all the Gary V's and all. I like to listen to all that, but none of that is truly going to fix the deepest problem, and that is the problem of sin. The Bible doesn't teach behavior modification. It teaches a supernatural transformation born again. I've used this analogy before. Have you ever, anybody, anybody ever watched the Chip and Joanna Gaines show? And I can't even remember the name of the show. I, I, my wife watches it religiously, and I kind of glance at it. And I, I hate the show sometimes, just to be honest, because I say I'm not going to watch it. I'm trying to be all manly sitting on the couch, and then they suck me in every time. Right? And I'm like, ooh, that's a nice honey bun. Mm. <laughs> ooh, where I, that Chip is so funny. You know? They just look like a lovely couple, both of them. But at the end of their show, they do this thing called the big reveal. You know what I'm talking about? For those that are, if you do not preach the prosperity gospel at Celebration Church, okay? And if you're offended by that, then that's okay. But we don't. We don't say, sow your seed and God will meet your need. Because how many people have ever sown their seed and God didn't meet the need? I'll raise my hand first. This guy. How many people have ever sown the seed and God didn't heal the person that I was praying for? This guy, one of them was my son, who passed away. Because my greatest need is not to get the blessing. It's because giving is the blessing. You understand that? Giving is the blessing. He gives more to us so we can be the blessing to our life. One of my favorite pastors, Robbie Gallaty, says it this way, that the gospel came to us on its way to someone. I believe that about generosity, that God showers us with good things so that we could be a blessing to more and to more people. As a matter of fact, in this particular scripture, in the language of the New Testament, it actually means, it's where we get our English word, hilarious. So you could say it's hilarious giving. The Christian life is about hilarious giving. Now, I've been in ministry for about 20 years, and I've never seen anybody put anything in the offering plate like this. And we don't do the offering plate, but, right? <laughs> Woo! Here's what most people do. Right? I'm, am, I, am I being right? Oh, I hope so. But the Bible says that if we're born again, it should be hilarious. <laughs> Thank God. I get to give to your kingdom one more time, God. Man, this is awesome. I get to give one more time. I get. 
That's what the Bible says giving should be like for the life of the believer. Not, well, I pay for this right here. It's not yours to begin with. It's God's. You want to make an impact in this city, go around being a generous giver. We have this thing called random acts of kindness. We have little cards that we give out every so often. And I tell people, go buy someone's meal. Buy a tank of gas for someone. Go buy their dry cleaning and watch what happens. I've never, never have I not done that before. And somebody goes, wow, that's a blessing. And I don't sit around to get all the glory and go, come on, come on. I go, God, you get every ounce of credit. That's why we don't take a lot of pictures here about stuff. If we're going to help people, we're just going to help people. We don't got to go, hey, look at our church. Let's get on the news. Let's do this. Let's do that. Listen, listen, I know some of you are mad at me right now, but listen, I'm not saying if your church does that or if you do that, you're going to hell. What I'm saying, though, is let it be done in secret because that's really according to Scripture. Because that way, God gets every ounce of credit and celebration gets zero credit. Okay? Am I scaring some of the new people? Are we, okay, good. Here we go. So making an impact, read daily. Pray daily, give generously. Two more real quickly. This is a big one. We have fallen into the lie in this country that Christianity is just about being present on Sunday mornings. But the gospel demands us to be engaged. Be engaged, not present. Genuine Christianity is a life of being all in, not just present. Because I can be present and not engaged. Let me give you an example and Ladies, you can thank, for me, thank, thank me for this later. How many ladies have you ever been on a date with your husband or your boyfriend or your bae or baby boo, whatever you call them? And they're kind of listening. I'll raise my hand. I've been there guilty. I can't. If not, I'll have to come to the altar right afterwards, okay? It's on. And then your wife or the sitting there goes, are you listening? Sure I am. You may be present at the dinner table. You may be present at the couch, but you're not engaged. So let's reverse the role. Have you ever had that done to you before? The reality is God is not raising up a generation of people that just will be present on Sunday mornings. They will never change the world. He's looking for people that are all in and fully engaged, that understand the mission, that want to live out the mission. Right? It's more than just being present. It's about being engaged. Let me give it to you another way. Jesus never called people to attend me. He called them to follow me. Listen, because the Bible says just attend, 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 and we check it off the list, don't we? Jesus never said attend me. He said follow me. Let me prove it to you. It's right in the scripture. Matthew 4, 19 says, come, follow me. This is where Jesus is calling his disciples. Jesus said, I will send you out to what? To fish for people. See, it's not about just coming to church, but it's about being the church, right? Engaged Christians understand the importance of the mission that God has called them to. That's why we do next steps. We don't do next steps because we like to sit here on Wednesday nights waiting for people to show up. We get excited about next steps because I've seen people that had no idea what they were called to do in the body of the Christ. And we help them go through this journey and it's like a light bulb goes off and now they're living on purpose. And some of them were here the whole month working on this place because they understood the importance of the mission. Right? Engaged Christians understand that Christianity is not a spectator sport. See, Coming close, your engagement will ultimately drive the attendance of this place. Did you know that? Now, God grows a church. That's not what I'm saying. But here's the thing. How many people would want to go to a church that goes, no, it's okay. Mm, Rob doesn't hit a home run about once every 90 days. Mm, the worship team didn't sing my favorite song. Mm, I don't like this pub table he preaches. I wish he did a pulpit. That's the church I grew up in. Hmm. Not many of your friends are going to go, oh, yeah, let me go to that church with you. <laughs> Not many people are going to go to a stingy church either. Your engagement and your all-in-ness is going to ultimately drive how many souls are sitting in these seats. Because when you're an all-in, like Jesus is already all-in with you, then what happens is you can't wait to share the good news with others. It has nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with God in you, the hope of glory. 
in you. You see? Be engaged, friends. Be engaged. Your engagement, as I said, will drive attendance, not the other way around. This is not a come and see thing. This is a go and tell and go and share thing, right? I, I heard it put this way. Engagement fuels involvement. Involvement fuels passion. And passion fuels invitation. See, when I'm all in, I can't wait to invite people to come to know Jesus. I'm not talking about a Sunday morning spectacle. I'm talking about a lifestyle, living a true lifestyle. Last thing real quickly. Read daily, pray daily, give generously, be engaged, not just present. Here's another one. Invite people to Jesus. Let me give you the Christianese version because I have some people that speak fluent Christianese in here. Evangelize. 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 Did you know that all of you are called to be ministers of the gospel? It's not a fancy title on a door somewhere, and you get the special parking space, and you get the Dasani water. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel. We are all called to be on mission for the gospel. And here's the thing. Do we really believe that we have the best news to offer this world? If so, friends, and by the way, the Bible literally means good news. It literally means good news. If we have the best news there is to offer, because how many people know that when you turn on the, the TV or if you're a streamer or whatever, your smart TV, whatever you watch the news, how many people know that you can be depressed in about five minutes watching the news? Right? It don't matter what you, it don't matter if it's the fake news. It don't matter if it's NBC news. It don't matter if it's, I'm going to cover all political parties, Fox News. It don't matter what it is. They're all depressing. And they're all talking about how the world's doing this and the left and the right and this person's doing that person. But we have the best news that we can offer anyone that despite what the world is doing, despite if everything is going to you know what in a handbasket, that Jesus has hope, Jesus has life, Jesus has peace, Jesus has rest. If we really believe that, then why don't we share it more? want to make an impact in your city you got to understand this that it's his role to save it's our role to fish you see that's what he says right here come follow me and i will send you out to fish for people let me give you the statistic and then they're going to lead us in a time of response I just want to cast this quick vision to you. It's not about the numbers, but it is about the numbers. There are 20,000 people in this area that are either far away from God, don't have a relationship with God. Maybe they've been hurt. And God wants to use you, all of you, to reach those people. And you can reach people that I would never reach and vice versa. Listen, I want to give you this statistic. 83% of people when they were, would attend would attend at least one time if invited by a friend but listen but only 2% of believers actually ever invited them. but yet we have the best news possible that you could ever offer so my question to you is this which category are you in the 98% or the 2% my loved ones, that loves my friends, that loves my co-workers so much that I would invite them to know Jesus. Here's the vision I want to cast. And they're going to sing for us and we're going to do a time of response. I want to issue all of us a challenge that we would at least invite one person this morning to come. It's not about the numbers, but God didn't move us here to not reach people. And I truly believe that God will put 250 to 300 people in this worship center. I truly believe it. You want to know why? Because there's too many hurting and broken people out there. So will you be all in in 2019? Will you be all in with the mission, with the vision, understanding that we must love, serve, and reach? We have no choice. It's not optional. 
because there are people, and I know nobody likes to talk about hell, but there are many, many people that are going to go to hell if they don't know Jesus. I pray that God would break your heart today for that. I pray that God would even let you sleep this week, that he would even visit you in your dreams, and that you would be restless. I'm going to I'm going to offend some people, but I'm just going to prophesy. That God would not let you go until you be all in and fully surrendered. And say, I'm all in, God. I want to do your will. And here's the first step to that as they leave us. If you do not know Christ today, right in your seat.